Hello friends of TV Agro, at this moment we are in the animal kitchen, my name is Daniel Bernal. I am the head of animal health and welfare. The zoo technician, the one who is in charge of balancing and establishing each of the diets of all our animals. As you can see my colleague obviously has a cap, that helps us to protect the food from being contaminated. Let's say with a hair, obviously that can be a physical contamination as such, we also obviously have to have a mask so that with our saliva we do not contaminate, we do not introduce our saliva into the food. Any bacteria that may affect the quality of the food. We also have to have boots for comfort and to avoid accidents as such. They have to wash their hands well every time they are going to handle one food or another. They also have to have their nails obviously cut so that no food gets into their nails and so we can contaminate them. Then they are the ones who prepare all these diets that we are going to show them. This is the diet of macaws where you can see the size of the particle. Most birds eat in julienne. You can see that it is a food of optimal conditions. Once a week we send a truck to the central supply, where we bring all the ingredients that you see in the back. We also make a preparation of some food that is in order to supplement the diet. This tray contains a cake that we use for most birds and primates. This cake has wheat yeast, wheat spoon, wheat flour, baking powder, honey, egg and sugar. We have to control the sugar level and the salt levels because when we offer a lot of sugar, it is like when we give a child a chocolate at night and we leave him with a lot of energy then obviously they will feel a lot of adrenaline and can become affected or aggressive. It is also very important to take this into account. We are already talking about a primate's diet. Although we can see how the particle size changes, so here we have concentrate, carrots and obviously watermelon, which is how we offer the diets of a medium primate of 3 kilos to a smaller primate, a marmoset, which we are talking about 300 grams, so obviously you can see how they change. Generally the protein for these animals such as primates and birds, the chicken is cooked in order to raise the chicken to an optimal temperature and always eliminate bacteria. The eggs are usually offered cooked in order to eliminate bacteria, a very common bacteria in eggs is salmonella which can generate some complications. There are some challenges out there where people eat raw eggs and a tip is not to do it because they can acquire these bacteria. In this area we have all the diets in some boards, where each of the animals is, the quantity or number of animals and obviously each of the ingredients gram by gram, here the operators or the kitchen assistant has a chopping board where he will have the food with a knife, he will start chopping and making the size that I was explaining just now, so that this food can be consumed in its entirety. He also has a weighing machine where in the weighing machine he will be thinking ingredient by ingredient in order to offer what these animals really require. These diets are changing due to the fact that an animal can get sick or start to lose weight or if an animal is born then we have to change the diets. The diets for some primates that are handled in groups, it is very difficult to weigh them all one by one and stressing them is not going to be beneficial. So what we do is that we standardize the diet according to an ideal weight. If the animal is thinner, smaller or thinner. Then with the ideal weight, which is a regular weight that comes out. In most investigations, we adjust the diets and we offer this food in this way. The caretaker also helps us according to the nutritional follow-up of the residues. In general we are managing a residue of 10 to 15 percent, because the animals will never tell us that they are full. So that is why we manage this percentage of error. In this area we have a term called biosecurity, which is like rules, 
limits that we set or establish in these areas to control biological risks. A biological risk can be a fungus, a bacterium. A physical risk can be hair, a fingernail, an eyelash, a chemical risk that we are obviously talking about chlorine, soap, enamel can also affect the safety or quality of the food and if we affect this, we only offer an inadequate diet where these animals can get sick, so that is why we install such a specific control. We have cold rooms and super large refrigerators where we store vegetables or fruit that need to be refrigerated. We also have freezers where we store shrimp, hake, salmon, blackberries, soursop, fruits that need refrigeration and we also have other rooms where we store all the meat, chicken, and so on. Here in this area we do not prepare the diets of all felines such as lions, jaguars and others. This in order to avoid cross-contamination, which is when you handle a fruit and a vegetable and go to a protein then there you are making a cross-contamination and therefore this food will be contaminated and will affect the animal's health quality. So we have an area where these diets are prepared and so are the chopping boards the knife, the weighing machines, the boards, and everything with them. Purpose of guaranteeing that the diet is what the animal needs and thus avoid the animal to be obese or thin and thus control the good nutrition of the animals. We also have an area called the granary where we have only the concentrate and the packages that arrive from last month are the ones we have to be using so that everything is circulating and thus prevent the feed from becoming contaminated. The concentrates tend to become contaminated with lice or fungi that obviously affects all its quality. In this area we handle some valdez where we have all the concentrates that are complementary to the diets, we also handle some supplements such as nestum, ensure, some lacto replacers if we have a breeding. We also have mirapel which is a supplement for the quality of the animal's hair. We have some concentrates that are intended for each animal's needs. We have herbivores that need maintenance or growth food or if the animal is lactating, we need to give it a lactation concentrate. If we need the animal to start growing, let's say a pig, then we can use concentrates for raising or usually it is for raising. All these foods must be standardized in pallets so that they are not exposed on the floor to control vectors such as rodents, insects or any animal that may affect our food storage. In these areas, most of the areas such as the cold room and the refrigerator should be disinfected every week to avoid contamination. The instruments that one handles here in this area, which are knives and boards, must be marked because of what I was talking about cross-contamination. So for the knife that is only for vegetables and fruits, it must be only for fruits and vegetables. And for the meat, it must be only for meat, in order to offer an adequate diet and so that the animals do not get sick, because it is a very high risk. We also use mineral salt, mineral salt is used more in herbivores so that the animal achieves satiety. We also use mineral oil to help digestive processes and that the animals do not become compacted or suffer from gases that usually happens in equines, so it is like a preventive method to avoid these health risks and complications. We already have some recipes here at home, a porridge with nestum, ensure and fruits for the animals that suddenly arrive a little weak or whose defenses are lowered. And when they arrive at the clinic area, we set up this nutritional pump that will obviously help us to contribute. In rainy seasons we also modify the diets, because the animals begin to suffer from colds, the defenses are lowered, 
the whole immune system is suppressed a little, so we implement what is honey. We use cinnamon, obviously this is from the nutritional part and in the medical part, there they establish their vitamin supplement, so that the animal does not get sick during these times. Also what we do is to increase the hay in the beds, we modify the sacks in their bedrooms, all this so that the animal will not suffer from those abrupt drop that they suffer when the temperature drops because in the area where we are we have a fairly high humidity. I hope you liked it. This is the most information I could have given you here in our nutrition area. If you want to know more according to all this information, there at the bottom of the screen is our page. I hope someday you come to visit us and can also make a workshop on nutrition and animal welfare. Thank you.